Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome. We're going to have a party with Jesus. And he has invited us. And so let us enter in with all your heart, singing his praise as each time we come together to stand, to kneel, to sit, to prostrate, right in your own homes. Make your home a dwelling place for God. As a dear, my, my closest priest friend said to me when we went to a, as a place where I take a walk on my day off, and, and, and there were people praying there, a rosary, right in the middle of the public square, in the, uh, under a gazebo. And they brought a statue of Mary, and they had their... It was so beautiful. They were, they were singing all the prayers of the patriotic rosary, and it was, it was magnificent. And he said to me, the church has left the building. And you know, in this time, this is one of the things that the graces of this time, sometimes we, we, we tend to confine where God's going to be active. And the Lord says, I'm God of the universe. I, I am, I'm everywhere. And, and so even though there's a specialness of coming to, to the church and, and being before Jesus and the Eucharist, and yet he is with you wherever you are. And so sanctify your dwelling places. Sanctify your homes with this praise and watch what the Lord will do. He's going to do miracles. Let us sing his praise. Alleluia. In his cover us. In his spirit, I come free to the Lord. Yes, O oh Lord, of grace and worship face to face. I am free, I am free to enter in. I am free to enter in His name. Jesus, cover us. To the throne of grace and worship face to face. Oh, praise the living God. I am free. I am free to answer Him. Who made the star? 
keep that vision that we're all wrong in a circle and Jesus is in the middle. So let's just have a few minutes of silence before him. What would you do? Would you want to sing more? Would you just want to be silent? Would you just be gazing at his holiness? Would you feel his presence? Would you feel the joy of the Lord? Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And once we're in that circle, staring at Jesus, it doesn't matter what's happening outside of that circle, out in the world and all the chaos. So the key is to stay in that circle. Let's walk with the King. Let's be with Him in His presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remember in this time of quietness and silence before the Lord, if you're getting a word, a word of knowledge, prophecy, prophetic word, forward it on the online chat to Father, and he will share it here if it's discerned. There's a beautiful silence in your room right now. I'm trusting that there's no television or radio or internet that's on, unless you're watching, well, of course, on the internet. But everything else is off. Well, this is Jesus' time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
praise to your name, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. Glory to you. Brothers and sisters, I would like to share with you from the scriptures today and believe the way the Lord would want us to see things from the great riches, of the wealth of the Word of God. Remembering that the Word of God guides us through the various realities of life, through the seasons of life. And sometimes we seek the counsel of other sources of counsel. And of course, that can be acceptable in, in many cases. But the fundamental reality, when it comes to the big questions of life, we need to go to God's Word. 
not to the world. And, um, and certainly, <laughs> depending on what sources you listen to, you will hear such a variety of what's happening today. Um, uh, someday, I hope that someone is going to do a, a kind of comic routine of the various news stations and compare them and, and try to make sense of, of what's happening because it's such a, a, an incredible variety of what you can, you could go from, and people are doing this, they're going from being elated to being depressed, to being angry, to being discouraged. And I can remember when I was in high school, I had a, a brief period of time in which my, I, I watched, I sat down at lunch, I got I, early from, from high school and I, it was my last year and I had basically a half day so that I could work the second half of the day. And one of my sisters was watching some silly soap opera. And so I started to eat my lunch sitting, sitting in front of this silly soap opera, watching it with her. And I noticed after about a month of doing this that I realized I, I had a change in my emotional state and my mental state based on what was going on in this ridiculous soap opera. And I said, that's it. <laughs> I'm not watching one more of these ridiculous shows. It, it just had taken way, way too much rental space in my head. And, and I think that that is certainly what happens uh, when we look at the realities of today with just a human perspective, we become um, excited or more, than, more often than not uh, depressed or discouraged or angry or whatever uh, based on some news reporting about something. And and it is a trap of the enemy for that to be our guide through life. It's a trick of the enemy. And we must be careful about um, what, we, what determines our outlook on life, what determines our, um, our state a mental and emotional and spiritual state, even more. And so, but let us look for a moment at the way St. Paul uh, viewed things in his time. This is from the first letter of, of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And... It is a... A godly man making a, um, a, in a graced way to guide his flock and to help them to focus on the things that really matter. Now keep in mind, more than likely at this time, there, is, there are a number of very trying situations happening. Certainly for St. Paul, <laughs> my goodness, he went through so much. Shipwrecked twice, um, spending a day and night on the, on the seas, um, scourged and uh, multiple times, imprisoned, um, sleepless nights. He talks about many different things that he passed through in his service of the Lord, of the gospel, and of the people of God. And, and there were persecutions going on in Paul's time. We know that Paul was a martyr. We know that he was beheaded in Rome. And so certainly there, were, there was cause for 
much trepidation, anxiety, disturbance, and yet he was like a ship that had a destination, that yes, the waves and the wind was blowing at him and the waves were crashing against his boat, but he knew where he was going. And, and so he didn't lose focus. He didn't lose a sense of God's purpose for his life. And so let us listen to his word. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, but I have my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So that, so this is what I think best because of the present distress, that it is good for a, per, a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek a separation. Are you free of a wife? Do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life. And I should like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world as in its present form is passing away. Listen now to the psalm. Listen to me, daughter, see, see and bend your ear. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty. For he is your Lord, and you must worship him. The, the prospect of, of each of these communicates something for us. Now, it is not so much whether or not someone stays in a particular state in life. Um, that's not the focus. It's the freedom to be able to be available for the Lord. And in this responsorial psalm, Psalm 45, the Lord talks to this, he speaks to this daughter of the king. Now, excuse me, the daughter who is going to Forget your own people and your father's house, not a daughter of the king, of course, but a daughter who will marry the king. And, and there is a certain insecurity, instability, or, or uncertainty, maybe, of that reality. But the Lord is assuring her, yes, you are leaving your father's house, but you are serving the king. And, and even though there is uncertainty in this, the Lord says, but don't, don't worry, you're, you're serving the king. He desires your beauty. He will lavish you with all that is good for you. I think in simplicity, that is the attitude that we ought to have in these days. That yes, there are a lot of uncertainties, a lot of situations that are causing us some trepidation, trepidation sometimes. Um, yet, the Lord is doing something new. The Lord is visiting his people in a new way. Now, if you watch some of the videos we send online, the videos from a number of different sources, including Renewal, Resource, Renewal, Renewal Ministries, I will be sending one out by Ralph Martin in the coming days. And it talks about the, the signs of the times and the particulars of some of those things that cause us to wonder um, what is happening in, in, in the world and where is God involved in this. And I think it's a good, important perspective to have. Um, we don't know the day of the Lord's coming. Uh, Ralph Martin certainly isn't claiming that. But um, the Lord will come sometime in each of our lives, um, whether at the moment of our passing 
or the moment when he comes in glory. But in the midst of the disturbance, in the midst of a kind of um, disturbance that the Lord has permitted in this time, whether it's the coronavirus or um, other aspects of social instability, uh, just the instability, the uncertainty of, of elections coming, financially, the difficulties many people are experiencing. Um, what we experience actually in the United States is, is probably very small compared to some other parts of the world uh, where the suffering is far greater. Um, but, but in the midst of that, there's a certain kind of discipline that the Lord is allowing us to pass through. And, and one of the things that I'm witnessing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the prayer meeting, is there are many people who are gathering uh, in various ways online in prayer and not just online but in person too in small groups i mentioned at the beginning there's a place where i often take a walk um, on my day off and and there was a group of people gathered there who were uh, on monday and they brought a statue of Mary and, and on, a, on a little platform and, and they had um, chairs around that they just gathered and they prayed the rosary together in this, under this gazebo in this public place right along the water. And it was very edifying to see that. And I, I think what's going on in this time is there's two realities. There's a certain degree of a chastisement of, of God kind of like waking us up. There's things that we held for our security. The Lord is allowing them to be removed. He doesn't necessarily have to remove them himself. He just allows the consequences of our, um, our lack of trust in him to be manifest, just like he did with the Israelites when they wanted to be like the pagan nations. He said, you want to be like them? Okay, I'll let them be closer to you. <laughs> and they would come and take over and enslave the Israelites. And, and they would cry out to the Lord and he would have mercy on them and deliver them. And something of that is happening in the stripping away of our natural securities. And, and that, of course, is very disturbing and very overwhelming at times and and yet in the midst of that the Lord is visiting his people that there is a kind of very quiet revival happening a revival of prayer I've seen it especially in terms of the rosary and not only seen it but I'm experiencing it that my own um, praying of the rosary has stepped up simply because there is God is doing something and in a particular way Our Lady is involved in that I shared uh, recently at something I forgot what it was but that when it was at on Mary's birthday um, Our Lady's birthday that she is the dawn the dawn that announces the sun coming. Once the dawn has has uh, begun, we know that the sun is going to be rising, and um, and it's sure. And even if there's been darkness with the coming of the dawn, we know that the sun is approaching and daylight is coming. And and so it is. Our Lady is very integral in this dawning of the new light of of Christ her son that she was first conceived without original sin and born of her parents Joachim and Anne and and this happened before the word would be made flesh in her womb because God was preparing a worthy temple uh, for for himself and, and so it is 
in the in these last days, whatever that means, these last days. Um, Mary comes to us, and she is the dawn announcing the rising of the sun, her son, uh, the king. And, and so, in what manner does this take place exactly? Oh, I don't know exactly. Certainly there have been times where um, similar realities have happened in the history of the church. Maybe not exactly the same, but somewhat similar. And, but yet, so what's going on is there is a kind of purification happening, and at the same time, there is a visitation happening. There's a purification happening, and and so that we don't cling to the, the things of this world. And there is a, a visitation that God is visiting his people and that there is a, a potential for those who would come to the Lord with faith, a potential for a great revival. What does that great revival look like? Well, um, May there be, and I would expect there will be, signs and wonders. Because as the Lord cultivates the faith, that, that gift of faith in his people, as we go deeper, deeper into prayer. Why? Because we can't stay on the surface. Because there's too many waves up on top. We have to go deeper. And, and the Lord, if you've ever been in the ocean, and you know, when a wave's coming at you, you don't just stand there and let, you hit, let it hit you. You dive in. You go down under the waves so that it doesn't knock you over. And so it is in these times. We have to go deeper. We have to go down under, you know, to, to be with the Lord, deeper in the Lord, and, and to abide with Him more intensely. And in that, the Lord will surely have us rise up with a new anointing, a new awakening, and a new uh, purification, and, and I pray a new holiness for the church. For you and I, we are the church. And as I mentioned in the beginning, the church has left the building. And, and it is true, and that's, that's not bad. I understand there's, there's some drawbacks. We miss having everybody here in this gathering. I miss, and we all miss, having more people coming to gather with us. But yet, the Lord is gathering us through the internet. And he is bringing that blessing to our homes. And, and so that is a good thing. And so we trust. We trust the Lord and we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We keep our eyes fixed on him. And we, we just surrender to him once again. And we go to Our Lady and say, Blessed Mother, you know what's going on here. Um, so stay with us. Help us to stay with you. And to be open to that revival. Revival of faith. Revival of, again, the early church's signs and wonders. Revival of a new conversion. New, uh, a new gathering of God's people and so may may we be open and and ready like you know, watch me vigilant as the reading from last Sunday was we have to be vigilant awaiting the Lord's coming and um, and ready to announce his coming and also to help others to yield to his grace and for that to be we have to be growing in our docility to the Holy Spirit so that there may be less of us and more of him. As John the Baptist prayed, I must decrease and he must increase. And so may we be open to that and cast fear from our midst and rely on the Lord God and, and watch and pray and with Mary and all the saints. Amen. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, 
I, I encourage you to yield to this word in whatever way the Lord would speak to your heart. Let's take a, a few moments now in prayer. Um, and uh, I do want to take a look at this. Let me see. If there is a prophetic word that you might have, you're welcome to bring that forth in Scripture. But let us turn to the Lord and, and bring before Him, who is our King, our Lord. We come before you, Lord Jesus, and, and we, we thank you for you are seated on the throne. And we worship you. And we know that as we worship you, that you scatter the darkness that sometimes uh, brings confusion to our hearts and our minds. We worship you and we believe that as we worship you that there is power released, that the, the enemy of our souls who is always looking to disturb us, always looking to uh, paralyze us in fear uh, or in unforgiveness or anger or whatever, um, that he is vanquished as we worship you. And, and we pray, Lord God, that you might stir us to worship you throughout the day, that we might become more and more uh, abiding in you, uh, steeped in prayer, that, that we would be vigilant in, in praising you and worshiping you and seeking your face and open to your inspirations, to your surprises, to your direction, especially as it pertains to sharing something of the good news of you with others. In whatever way you give us capacity, Lord. And we pray that we may not be like the world, running around in trepidation. May we not be like that, Lord. May we banish that sentiment from our hearts in whatever way it comes, disguised as um, something good, unnecessary, but in fact, may, may you lift us from that and give us the eyes to see what you are doing even to the way the martyrs did. I think of St. Stephen. And as they were martyring him, as they were killing him with stones, he was praising you as he beheld Jesus, you, in glory in heaven. May we be like Stephen, St. Stephen, and all the saints who had a different set of eyes, than what the world does. Oh Lord, we know that that came through vigilance and prayer. We know that that came through the school of hard knocks, of learning to, to be converted, converted from a worldly mentality to a godly mentality. Oh Lord, do this in us. We want to be your ambassadors. We sung a song before, Lord, about I, the Lord, um, who is I, the Lord of snow and rain. What's that one called? Um, the one where he says, here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord. And we want to be praying that prayer, Lord, constantly. Here I am, Lord, send me. Lowly me seemingly insignificant in the world's eyes, but not in your eyes. Here I am, Lord. I'm available. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to be really and truly available for the proclamation of your kingdom. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lots of praise 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, I love you. My whole heart, all praise and glory to you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, sweetheart of Jesus, you are my love. Thank you. You are the love of my life. Thank you for healing. Thank you for hearing my prayers. Thank you for healing baby Cad, Caden. Caden. They're getting stronger every day. Psalm 18, I love you, Lord, my strength. Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock of refuge, my shield, my saving horn, my stronghold. Prophetic word. Yes, my people, gather around my throne and come into my presence to receive the gifts I want to pour out on you in abundance. By walking in the path I have for you, you will know my presence in an even deeper way. Fear not. Open your hearts to me and allow yourselves to be filled to overflowing. My love and joy await you. There are so many graces I have for you to strengthen you, to lighten your burdens. There are insights which my spirit is showing you. Receive all I have for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 19, Matthew 19, 22 is the verse. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Lord, may we never go away sad when we are invited by you, when we are extended an invitation to come to follow you. Oh, Jesus, may we never go away sad. May we trust you. Your invitation is better than anything the world could offer. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to bring our petitions before you. We pray for we pray for the grace to to hear and to heed your word, for the grace to persevere, to persevere in, in prayer especially, to persevere in love, to persevere in forgiveness, 70 times, seven times as we'll hear in, the, hear in the gospel this coming Sunday. Oh, Lord, grant to your church that, that encouragement for those who are truly seeking you, that they may be encouraged to know that you are available, that you are present to your people. Oh, Jesus, 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we always want to pray for Holy Father and all the bishops. Merciful Lord, bless them. Give them a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Anoint them. Anoint them, encourage them, guide them to know what is your pleasure, to not listen to worldly advice as they make decisions, administrative decisions, as they make various decisions on how to, to, to care for the flock. May they not be, and me too, <laughs> may we not be um, preoccupied by, by buildings 
and by structures, but may we be about the building of your kingdom and grant that grace, O oh Lord God, that focus on the things that really matter. Jesus, give us hearts for the gospel. Jesus, Lord bless as we enter into this preparation time for elections. Lord bless this country. May it truly be in God we trust. May we do what is right and pleasing to you. You have blessed us in great ways, Lord. Please purify us, O Lord God, of all the idols that we have allowed to come in, where we have made ourselves bigger than what we ought. May we truly serve one another and give us Give us a heart that is humble, a heart that is trusting you, Jesus. Help us to, to guard the safety and the dignity of, of every person that you have put before us, O Lord. We pray for a change of heart in the ways in which we treat one another, those we see and we judge and those we don't see and we disregard them. We pray in a special way for, for the, those in a crisis pregnancy right now, those mothers who are overwhelmed and are tempted to do that which is make the worst decision of their lives. Lord, help them to choose life. And for those who wander around in the darkness of grief that cannot be consoled because of having taken their life of the unborn child in their womb or someone else's life, an elderly person, Lord, we pray for your mercy to conquer their hearts and give the hope seeing once again the reconciliation with you and even with their unborn baby who has gone to you prematurely. Lord, mercy. We plead for your mercy, Lord. We pray, O oh Lord God, for, for the poor and the lowly, for those who are suffering greatly in this time, perhaps because of imprisonment, especially those unjustly deprived of liberty. Anyone who was kidnapped or held prisoner against their will and, and against what is just and good, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And pray for those who are imprisoned by, by addiction. That slavery, that bondage, that is greater than any physical bondage. Lord, please, please intervene, O Lord God. Show forth your glory in signs and wonders to break every chain. Oh, Jesus, we stand in the gap right now and we intercede for all those who are bound by chains of addiction and sin and unbelief. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Kiria Rabarara Sando, Kiria Rabarara Siervo Ramoshur, Jesus, set the captives free. Jesus, you came to break every chain, to set the prisoners free. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, help us to speak that word to those who are bound up in that prison of unbelief or in some kind of addiction. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for healing for all those who are sick, <clears throat> those who, who are confined to their beds, those who are in hospitals and institutions, those who are homebound, those who are homeless, 
and sick and those who have no security in this life. Lord, please, have mercy on them, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And we pray for healing for all those intentions that have been brought before us, for J and M, for two brothers, Rosemary, as well as a friend, for a friend who has Alzheimer's, give her your peace and your healing. We pray in thanksgiving for blessings received. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing of ability to have the surgery on my eye. Thank you, Lord. I pray for continued healing, for wisdom for the doctors, and for my body to recover well. And I pray for grace of conversion for loved ones. You know, Lord, all the people who are in our hearts, our loved ones, children, nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters, cousins, dear friends. Oh, Lord, we pray for all to come to know you, to know you, to love you, to serve you, to bend the knee, to know the joy of being yours. We pray for traveling mercies for those who are traveling in these days. Jesus, for grace, the court proceeding on the 21st of this month. Lord, you know all the needs of your people. You know the needs that are deep within our hearts. We pray, Lord God, for, for your grace to, to really walk with you in these days. We pray that we may abide with you, abide in you. And, and perhaps, brothers and sisters, we might spend a few moments just worshiping the Lord, lifting these petitions up before the Lord, that um, because the Lord, that our prayers rise like incense before him. Somehow praise is like, um, is, is like a, a booster rocket that helps our, our prayers rise to heaven. And, and so let us just worship the Lord once again and, and lay before him all that would be a hindrance, distraction. Let us turn from sin. Let no sin cling to us because the Lord is, came to set us free. And so, Jesus, we worship you, we adore you, we bow before you, Lord. We, we, we surrender to you, Jesus. You are everything, Lord. Earlier in this evening, we've been praising you and, and worshiping you and adoring you in the most blessed sacrament, adoring your precious blood and praising your, your holy name, Jesus, the various titles that the scriptures give us for who you are, that those revelations of, of who you are and what you have done. Thank you, Lord. We adore you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up with our praise. And as we worship build our throne, and as we worship build our throne, and as we worship build our throne, come Lord Jesus and take your place. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord Jesus. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of praise, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus. Thank you.
Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank, you, Lord. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for lifting Lord, our Lord. hearts, lifting our minds, lifting our eyes to yes, see you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. And Lord, we ask for your blessing. We ask for your blessing, Lord God. You are a good, loving Savior. And you are here because you, you love us. And, and out of your love for us, it is your desire to bless your people. Those who, who have given their lives to you, Lord God, we surrender our lives to you and we ask your blessing. Your blessing over all the intentions that we have brought before you, all the circumstances of our lives, we ask your blessing upon us to be able to see, to walk in your anointing and in every way to trust you and to manifest your glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Unto mergo sacramento veneremu cerui et anticum documentum novo ceda ritsui Prestet fide supplementum, sensum defectui, genitori, genitoque, lasset jubilatio, salus ana virtus quoque, sidet benedicio, Procedenti avutroque, comparsi laudat sio. Amen. Down in adoration falling, this great sacrament we hear over former rites of worship, newer rites of grace prevail. Faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free and the Spirit God proceeding from them each eternally be salvation, honor, blessing, might and endless majesty. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, truly you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you want for us and fill us with that peace that surpasses understanding that we may be vessels of your peace, your salvation, the good news to all those we need. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord, please extend this blessing to all those for whom we pray. May they share in this blessing, God. Your blessing.
our divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world even unto the end of time. Amen. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All honor thy to claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Heart the love celestial him angel choirs above are raising cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising fill the heavens with sweet accord holy 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 lord fill the heavens with sweet accord holy 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 lord and just before we sing our closing hymn just a couple quick announcements this Saturday we praying for the we're praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we have a guest coming in uh, who will be leading in that and Father Peter and myself will also be assisting in that as well and this Friday night we have a prayer and deliverance service and confession is also available during that time and of course Sunday Mass is at 10 a.m. Um, so any more information about other events just tune in to our website Saint Antoninus S-A-I-N-T A-N-T-O-N-I-N-U-S and the rest of it you'll have to look it up because I can't remember <laughs> praise God Amen, Amen one song that has been taking me through this journey and it's your grace is enough so we're going to close off with that song tonight praise Amen. God Amen. Take that message, take that letter that resonates in your heart. His grace is enough. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me.
grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God. song of your salvation and all your people sing Blessing, God bless you all, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.